Ag PhD full episodes and more are now available on Acres TV, the newest ag platform connecting you to fields of information. Look for us on watchacrestv.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about corn reproductive stages. Once we get past tassel, the reproductive stages start, and a lot of folks say, well, wait a second, isn't the tassel set for reproduction? Isn't that where the pollen comes from? Absolutely, but that tassel has to be out and spread open and ready to go before the reproduction can begin. Yeah, and actually, let's step back for just a little bit because I kind of look at about V2 when ear shoots are initiated. Uh, to me, technically, that's the reproductive stage, but officially, reproduction doesn't start in corn until we get to silking. So right after tassel, there's silking. That's technically R1 or reproductive stage one. Well, all those early stages, all the root growth, all the vegetative leaf stages that are coming along the way, they do set the table for more potential yield or to catch more of your potential yield. Once we get the tassel out, shedding some pollen, landing on those silks, that's where fertilization actually happens. So each one of those silks is going to be attached to an individual kernel on the ear. And when pollen lands anywhere on that silk, you've got pollination and you will have a kernel. So there are six technical stages for corn reproduction, but basically just in real simple terms, that's kind of the way it works. Darren just said, all right, pollen, and that lands on the silks, it fertilizes each individual kernel, then those kernels are going to eventually fill out and hopefully every kernel will fill out on that ear and then we've got a complete ear. Well, we start with a little tiny blister so it looks like a little bump on the ear. Then we go to milk where it starts filling in with white milk. Then we look at dough stage where that milk starts to get a little firmer. Then we get to a stage that's a little bit controversial. It's the dent stage. Corn kernels don't actually have to dent back. If they're completely full of solid nutrients, well, then you aren't gonna dent. But a lot of times what we see on kernels is as some of that moisture starts to dry out of that kernel, it, it will start to go and firm up and we'll see a little dent in at the top of the kernel. And then eventually we get to physiological maturity where that kernel really kind of detaches from the ear. It's still attached on the ear, but you'll see a black layer at the bottom where it used to be the, what I call umbilical cord, that's not a technical term, but it, it cuts off that flow of water and nutrients into those kernels. Ultimately though, before the farmer's going to harvest, in most cases, like for us on our own farm, if we want grain corn and we're gonna store it in a bin, we would like that corn to be relatively dry. So we'll use our grain dryer and we'll harvest at, let's call it 20 to 24% moisture and dry it down. But ultimately we want that corn to be down 13 to 15% to store in a bin. So some farmers will wait. They'll just let the corn sit out in the field till it naturally dries down to that level. And farmers will be watching the development of these kernels along the way, especially if we see frost in the forecast that, uh-oh, there could be some cold weather coming. Is our corn going to be safe? Once we reach that black layer stage, we're completely safe from frost. Temperatures can get cold. We hope they stay warm, as Brian said, to kind of dry that kernel down naturally. But once we reach that physiological maturity or black layer, we are safe for the year. Yeah, but hey, one nice thing about that frost is a lot of times it will kill our weed of the week. We'll tell you what this week's weed is coming up later in the show. 